before uh, you pop open a beer or maybe uh, those canned vegetables you uh, cooked up last night, there is a relatively, um, there's a safe feeling that that food is safe and that it is not harmful. Well, that was not always the case. The author uh, of our, our next guest is an author who's written a book called The Poison Squad. One chemist's single-minded crusade for food safety at the turn of the 20th century. Pulitzer Prize winner Deborah Blum joins us. Good morning, Deborah. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. It's so interesting that, right, we, we, we take all of this for granted, but we didn't just wake up and all of a sudden everybody was worried about food safety. Take us back to the turn of the, ni- of the last century. What was it like going to the supermarket? You know, this was something that was a big shock to me once I started doing the research because I'd had this image of 19th century food as being sort of a farm fresh panorama of wonder. So there's no regulation, right? There's no food safety regulations. There are no labeling regulations. It's not illegal to put anything you want to into food as a food manufacturer. So we see two things. We see a panorama of fakery because this allows manufacturers to make their food cheaper at their end. Uh, Brick dust and cinnamon would be an example. Charred bone and ground coffee would be an example. Ground gypsum and flour, right? And so you see this huge amount of fakery. There were actually McCormick back in the day used to import um, coconut shells by the ton and grind them up and mix them into all their different spices. And at the same time, there's a rise of industrial chemistry. And so food manufacturers are also saying, well, we now have this grab bag of new compounds that can do good stuff for us. And and many of these were untested preservatives, which included formaldehyde in milk, the cleaning product borax in butter, uh, the salicylic acid, which is basically aspirin in beer and wine. So the average American in the late 19th century is getting a phenomenal dose of industrial chemistry with every meal. Uh, How harmful was it to people? Well, the title of my book is The Poison Squad, and so when they were getting this, they actually were not aware of how dangerous it is because there was no safety testing. There were scandals. There were, you can actually go into newspapers and see embalmed milk scandals, which was formaldehyde poisoning children, or embalmed beef scandals, which was formaldehyde poisoning American soldiers uh, who were being fed canned beef. But the real sort of cross the line moment was when the scientist in my book, Harvey Wiley, who worked for the USDA, uh, started testing these things in human volunteers. And that was, I think, the first time, that was about 1902, that people sort of were rocked back on their heels and said, wow, we are really eating dangerously every day. Hmm. Uh, Europe, you say in the book, The Poison Squad, took on some basic regulations, but America resisted it in every way, shape, and form. That's right, and and there's a number of factors there, I think. One is that people really were not informed early on. Um, you know, they tr- originally trusted their food supply. The This knowledge of what was going into it sort of, you know, filtered out slowly, and so there wasn't a big groundswell of public pressure at first. At the same time, Business was very aware, and they could see the threat of some kind of regulation interfering with their practices looming. And so they organized in all kinds of way to fight off that regulation. Really starting about in the 1890s, you see this enormous pushback, part of which, and, and, and you would recognize this today, involves American businesses giving a lot of money to legislators to make sure that all of these efforts to regulate food die in committee, as indeed they did. Because everybody needed a dose of formaldehyde with their milk. Otherwise, it was a job-killing regulation. Yes, and they actually, in one of the congressional hearings, there was a businessman, uh, I want to say he was from Ohio, but he used a lot of preservatives in his food, and he said to members of Congress, and I'm here to tell you that all of us eat embalmed milk every day, and we like it, right? <laughs> and he was just saying, 
this is a wonderful thing for all of us. Formaldehyde actually makes the milk taste a little better because it's sweet. I mean, it was a very different time in thinking about what puts it at, us at risk. And so it really took someone like this zip obsessive scientist at the heart of my story to start driving this conversation in new ways. The book is called The Poison Squad, One Chemist, Single-Minded Crusade for Food Safety and the Turn of the Century, Pulitzer Prize winner Deborah Bloom. Blo uh, Deborah, how did you find this story? Well, I, I, I'm very interested in poison. I know that makes me sound a little creepy, but my, the book I had done before was on catching homicidal poisoners in the early 20th century. So I saw these references to this experiment, which was an experiment which was directly on people. And I, and I started asking myself, well, why in the world would you go right to people? It just really said something about the state of science at the time. But the other thing was, why was the situation so desperate that the only way to answer these questions was to experiment on young men in their 20s? Hmm. And so once I started looking at those two questions, I was off and running. Uh, yes, that is weird. Just uh, I'll let you know. Deborah Blum. <laughs> totally weird. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winner. The book is called The Poison Squad by uh, Penguin, The Poison Squad. Deborah, thanks for checking in. Uh, good luck with the book. Thank you, and thanks for having me 